Shalom and welcome to this week's Bible study. This week we'll be studying about why Jesus is called the Son of Man. And Jesus has many different names and today we'll be looking at the name Son of Man and uh, why he was called, why he is called that. Um, and so uh, uh, before we get started we'll go ahead and sing our song which today is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross and I'll uh, bring that up now. Okay, and uh, so today we will be studying about uh, why Jesus is called the Son of Man. And so before we get started, we'll go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. Pray that you bless us today and help us to uh, learn your word in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, and um, so, you know, we know that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is God. Uh, because the Bible says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And John 1.14 says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay? And, um, 
And we also know that in the Old Testament, it was prophesied that the Messiah would be born a child and would be God in the flesh. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Isaiah 9, 6 prophesied that there would be a child that would be born, and that child would be God in the flesh, because he would be the Mighty God and the Everlasting Father. Okay, so because Jesus is and the Father all one, um, and uh, but you know why is he called the Son of Man in so many places, including uh, Luke chapter five, um, verses twenty through twenty five? It says, "And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy son, sins are forgiven thee." And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, "Who is this which speaketh blasphemies?" Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived those thoughts, he answered and said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts, whether it is easier to say that thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up, before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God so here you know Jesus called himself the son of man and he was saying that as a son of man he was God as is prophesied actually uh, in Daniel and uh, he was making that connection and um, and he said that he and he showed that he could forgive sins because God can forgive sins and Jesus is God um, so, uh, the Pharisees were right when they said that only God can forgive sins like that, uh, and Jesus was making the point that he is God, um, and that was the point he was making there, and, um, Matthew 12, 8, and he's also called the Son of Man in many other places, including, uh, Matthew 12, 8, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day, Matthew twelve forty for as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, speaking of his burial. Uh, Matthew thirteen thirty seven. he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Uh, that was the parable of the sower. Uh, Matthew thirteen forty one. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Uh, that's speaking of when Jesus comes back and sets up his millennial reign. And Matthew 16 is also speaking of the millennial reign of Christ. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matthew twenty twenty eight says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus is referred to and refers to himself as the Son of Man in all aspects where he's talking about his death, his burial, uh, his resurrection, his uh, millennial reign. He is saying that the you know he is God, but he is also the Son of Man, and and he's putting it like there's no difference. And um, it is prophesied in the Old Testament that Jesus is the Son of Man. Uh, Daniel seven thirteen and fourteen says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, his dominion as an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom which shall not be destroyed. Okay? And so there in Daniel, Jesus, uh, Jesus is called Son of Man there in the Old Testament. Uh, now it's important to know that the word man here is speaking of mankind. Um, because Jesus is the Son of God, uh, he did not have a human father, he could not have a human father, and it was actually first prophesied in Genesis chapter 3 after the fall, uh, Genesis three fourteen through 15 says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt eat, and thus shalt thou eat, all the days of thy life, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, 
and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, so this was the first prophecy right after the fall of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Because when Jesus was hung on the cross, he was nailed to the cross through his feet, so his heel was bruised. But when he arose from the dead, he crushed the devil's head. Because the devil lost power, and, you know, the age of grace is here, and people can, and everybody can be saved. And the, you know, so, and the Bible even says in one place that if the devils had understood the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and the age of grace, they would have never caused Jesus to be crucified because now they are in such a worse state than they were. Because for one thing, humans now have power over the devil in the name of Jesus. Humans didn't have power over the devil before. You know, they, you know, uh, it was, the devil was an enemy, and he, and you know, you couldn't, like, rebuke him, you couldn't ball him, you couldn't, there wasn't something that you could say to make the devil leave you alone. Um, you, you could just pray and ask God to have him leave you alone, but it wasn't the same. In the name of Jesus, we're allowed to use that to control, to, uh, you know, make the devil leave us alone, and, and the name of Jesus is so powerful that lost people can use it and cast him out of people because the Bible says that Jesus said in Matthew uh, that um, the uh, false prophets at judgment whenever he sends them to hell are going to say but Lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils the name of Jesus Christ the resurrection of Jesus Christ because we didn't have that power before the resurrection the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ gave human beings the power to cast out the devil even if they're not saved sometimes and many times. Now, you do have in the Bible, well, um, you know, it's really dangerous to do that because the Bible does give an example in the book of Acts where some uh, pe people tried to cast out the devil and they weren't. Uh, saved and the devil jumped on them and and you know beat the guy up um, and beat, beat the guys up so it can be really dangerous but there's many people who do cast out devils in the name of Jesus and they're not harmed like that because that's what Jesus said he said that on judgment day those false prophets who were never truly saved but they were able to use the name of Jesus to actually cast out devils um, so the name of Jesus gave us that power, and we got that power because of the death, burial, and resurrection. If Jesus dead, had never died and rose again, it, we wouldn't have gotten that power with the devil like that. And things would have been different. And the Bible says that the devil would have never have had Jesus crucified if he, if he had understood that. Um, but, um, you know, and another thing that's important to know is the reason why... Uh, Jesus had, could not be born of a man, that the word son of man means son, that he's mankind, uh, and that his physical father could not be a man, uh, but could be a woman, is because the sin nature, the Bible shows in Romans 5.12, that the sin nature is passed down from father to son. It doesn't go through the mother, it goes through the father. So Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, because you you know in a in a natural way the um, the child gets his blood from the father and the sin nature is carried through the blood. They don't get the the blood from the mother. They get it through the father, um, and the sin nature is passed down from the father to the child. Um, now, there's been all kinds of ethical debates and stuff over cloning, and I am completely against human cloning. I think it's playing God. It's dangerous. Um, it's evil, and it should not be done. But there's been a lot of debates on, okay, well, if a human is cloned, you know, are they a sinner? Um, because they say that through cloning, that there's a type of cloning where they do, like, a shock of electricity to cause the body to start growing. Um, and so they're saying, well, they take the mother's egg and they shock it, you know, it's an unfertilized egg, and they shock it with electricity, and it starts growing, 
it's either in theory or it's actually been done. I'm not sure. But, um, and the qu- debate is as well, does a clone have the same nature? Are they really human? You know, um, yes and yes. Yes, they are really human. Yes, they have the same nature because even though they didn't get the blood from the father, the egg has blood from the mother and the mother's blood is tainted by sin so it's a little different than the natural way to where it comes to the father because in Adam all die you have to remember Eve was taken from Adam's rib um so that's why Eve also became a sinner and Adam all died okay and, and Eve ended up dying too um we don't know when Eve died. We know that Adam was 930 years old, and we guess that Eve probably died before then, but the Bible doesn't say. So, yes, um, if they were ever able to actually clone a human like that, yes, it would be uh, fully human. It would have God-given human rights. It would be a sinner um, because it would have blood from its mother, which would have come from its grandfather, you know, that always goes back to the man somewhere. So it would have that sin nature. See, Jesus didn't get that blood from his mother at all. He he had the father's blood, so the, like, it's, because it's passed from father to son, but even with a clone, there's a man back up the line someplace. But with Jesus, there was no man like that. It was he had God the Father. He had God the Father, and so his blood was divine. And he, so cloning is like completely different. But yes, the person would be fully human. It would have human rights, and it would have a sin nature and need to be saved. Um, you know, and but doing that kind of stuff, that's one of the things that brought the flood. You know, in Noah's day was they were doing stuff like that and they were also mixing humans and animals and just like they're trying to do today is really evil and it should not be done it should be there should be strict laws against it it should be the death penalty to do it it is evil it is playing god and we are stepping outside of all realm of jurisdiction into things that we should not be messing with um but the people who are brought into being because of those things it's not their fault and so they should be allowed to be allowed to live and be happy and serve god and be saved and, and loved and everything just like anyone else um but you know jesus uh he got his blood from his father um and so it was uh sinless you know it was divine um even uh the, you know, um, with, whenever the uh, Ark of the Covenant was found in Jerusalem, it had blood on it, dried powdery blood on it. It was not rotten, and that blood was taken and analyzed, and it was found that he got that the blood was still alive. Um, it was he had not rotted, it was not corrupted, it was not dead, and the blood was different from human blood because it had like all twenty six chromosomes from the mother. But it only had one chromosome of a father. Remember, God is one. So it was different from any other human. And that's how, and then after 2,000 years, it had not rotted because Jesus' blood is incorruptible. There was no sin. You have to remember, human bodies were made to live forever. Um... And so our blood was never supposed to rot, but then sin came in like a cancer, and it caused, and it defiles us, and it actually causes physical death. Um, Jesus' blood was different. Uh, it only had one chromosome for the Father, which pointed to God. And then the fact that the blood was alive, it had, it had just dried out and become powder. It was not corrupted. It was not decayed at all. Um, it was actually alive. Um was really amazing and you can actually watch that let me um you can watch a video on that on youtube um i'd have to find it let's see um it's uh ron wyatt had found the ark of the covenant and there was information about that um let's see 
Yeah, I think this is it. Um, yeah, there's a YouTube video um, that you can. There's a bunch of them, um, and I think they may be in a playlist. I'm gonna. I'll try to put it at the end of this video, and uh, or I can probably put it in my like just create a playlist and then show that. Um, and I'll try to put it at the end of the video and then you can look at that because that was very interesting. You know, they found Jesus' blood and um, and the Ark of the Covenant had been hidden under in Jerusalem and it was actually under the cross hole. So when, Jesus, when they pierced Jesus' side, the blood sprinkled down and actually went onto the Ark of the Covenant and... Um, and it dried there for 2,000 years. It was not corrupted. It was not decayed or anything. It just dried out. And it, when they looked at it under a microscope, they <laughs> was like, they asked Ron, where he got that blood at? Because they said, whose blood is this? And he had taken to the Jewish leaders, and they were asking him, whose blood is this? It's still alive. And then they were like, well, there's only one more chromosome. And he said, it is the blood of your Messiah. And, um, and they were really shocked about it. Um, and... Uh, I think some of the people got saved too, so that was really good. And um, so, you know, we know that Jesus is the Son of God, but he's also called the Son of Man, meaning that he was human. Um, he was of the seed of the woman because he couldn't have an earthly father due to the sin nature of the sin nature being passed to father to son. Um, and then, um, now, Jesus is also. Uh, called the last Adam because the first Adam was created by God and Adam the first Adam was called the son of God because God created him he had no other parents but he was made from dirt he wasn't the same substance of God as Jesus is um, he was you know uh, but he was just simply called in one place it's, Adam, it's, it's called Adam the son of God in one of the genealogies of Jesus I think it's in Luke uh, because God created him he had no father or mother um, and uh in 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 47, says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So, Jesus is called the last Adam, but it's making the distinction that Jesus is a spiritual Adam, not a physical Adam. And he is the Lord from heaven. Okay. And Romans 5.12 says, Well, for as, born, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. Uh, and then 1 Corinthians 15.21-22 through, through says, For since by man came death, meaning Adam sinned, he was the first man, by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead, which was Christ, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So, Jesus is called the last Adam, and he's completely contrasted with uh, Adam, the first man, because it's like he, Christ came and undid what Adam did. He fixed the problem, you know, because in Adam all die physically and spiritually, Jesus came so that in him we would, could all be made alive, both spiritually and then even physically resurrected from the dead at his second coming or at the rapture. Um, therefore, you know, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. In his humanity, Jesus died, and in his divinity, he arose. Because in his divinity, Jesus could not die. A, a, a God can't die. Um, you know, God God in his divinity is a spirit. He can't die. Um, and uh, so he had to be fully human in order to die, but yet he had to be fully God in order to raise himself from the dead, and Jesus did raise himself from the dead. John ten seventeen through 18 says, Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This is the commandment 
this commandment have I received of my father. So Jesus was God and being God because as regular humans, um, we can't lay down our lives and then take it up again. We, we don't have that power. Um, Jesus had that power because he was God. Because he was God, he could lay down his life. And because he was God, he could resurrect his life. He could take it up again. Um, so, uh, Jesus is called the Son of Man because he is mankind. Um, and it, he was explaining how that God would become, how he was God in the flesh. He, God had become a man in order to die for us. Uh, because to save us because if he had come down as just God he couldn't have died for us because God can't die um, you know uh, but his human body you know did die and he shed his blood and it atones for all sins because his blood was sinless and not corrupted it can't even die or decay as is proven by what they found in Jerusalem on the you know on the Ark of the Covenant um, and the Bible even says that the Bible says that there be three that bear record on earth the water, the blood, and the let me find that the, the spirit, the water, and the blood. The Holy Spirit bears witness that Jesus Christ um, died on the cross. The, we've got the blood of Jesus in the earth uh, that testifies that. He was God in the flesh, and he died on the cross. And then the water, um, water never actually goes away. Um, we, I, there's not a way to find that, I don't think, but it is still in the earth because we know water is just simply recycled. Um, and, uh, and that is in, um, John, uh, I think it's First John, let's see. First John uh, 5 8 and then all three that bear witness in earth the spirit which is the Holy Spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one um, so um, those all of those are in the earth witnessing that Jesus was God in the flesh and he died on the cross and rose again and um, but, yep, Jesus is called the Son of Man because he is 100% God, 100% man. He is, uh, the word man there means mankind. Um, and so that's, uh, the lesson for today. And, uh, thank you so much for watching. And, um, uh, and we'll go ahead and close for today. And, um. Uh, We'll close in prayer, and then I will do the Aaronic blessing over you in Hebrew and then in English, as found in the Bible in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your word and all your blessings. Pray that we'll have a wonderful week, and you keep us all safe, and help us to remember your word. Uh, in Christ Jesus' name, amen. Ya Marekha Adonai Rajesh Marekha, Ya El Adonai Panav Aleka Viku Neka. Esau Adonai Panav Aleka Be'asim Laka Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord uh, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Thank you so much for watching this week and thank you for everyone who uh, likes the videos and shares them and leaves comments that really helps our channel out. And um, uh, thank you for uh, everyone that supports our ministry in other ways and. Um, if God lays it on your heart to support our ministry so that we can have more resources to reach more people for Christ, uh, please use the Patreon or PayPal links in the description. Uh, thank you so much for watching this week, and may God bless you. And um, I, I know the last few days, uh, uh, last week or so, I've had trouble keeping up with putting the Bible scriptures uh, recordings on every day. Uh, but I'm still like a few days ahead for the year, and I'm going to try to get in there one day this week later this week and hopefully tomorrow and try to put like five or six days on all at once to try to help speed that back up uh last week has just been really busy and um uh and i've been having trouble keeping up with it but i've got to try to get in there and make sure i don't get behind on it because i really don't want to do that um so uh i'll try to get that 
built back up. Um, I'm still like a few days ahead, for, you know, for the whole year. Um, but it's, uh, but I'll try to get in there and like put out like five or six at a time to try to get that built back up. And, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye. God bless you.